Hello again, it's Matthew here from Matthew North Music. Now, today's video is going to be about a piece of modern hardware to go inside this, the BBC Micro. Now, as you know, I'm a big fan of the BBC Micro. I've had one since I was 11 years old in 1983. And I've probably used it more in the last two or three years than I probably have done in the intervening three decades. Now, this particular Beeb here, this is my main Beeb that I had as a... Christmas present in 1983 and it has got various add-ons added to it some of which I've put in the channel some I haven't um, one of the things is this the um, the GoTech external floppy drive which kind of works like a, a disk drive except you can use a USB stick now inside the BBC micro we've got various ROMs and if you've seen some of my previous videos, I've made a video on how you burn a ROM and put it inside the Beeb to do something. But the Beeb itself can address a lot more ROMs than it's actually got sockets for. And there is a really good modern solution. So you could get the maximum amount of ROM and RAM chips inside the BBCB. And best of all, it's made within two miles of where I live. So let's have a look at it. Here we go, it's all inside this anti-static bag and I will take out the instructions first and here we have a basic instruction guide on how you install this interface which we'll refer to in a minute and inside here is the device itself. If you look closely you can see there's a socket here that looks like it's a socket for a processor and that's exactly what it is and here there's a a pin connector that looks a bit like a ROM and there's also a little battery in there uh, because this has got battery backed up memory on it and actually if I just turn it around so it's actually the correct way up um, you can see that um, it's got all the various chips in it and the idea is that we will fit this inside a regular BBCB with very little uh, adjustment needed and we will then have 16 ROMs and RAM chips, uh, eight of each, inside the computer. And the actual memory is, is all on these chips here, I think they are. Um, but yeah, so we're going to take apart a regular Beeb, we're going to install this, and then I'm going to show you how we write ROMs to the board that we can then use for future use. This is the machine then that I'm going to install the ROM board into. And as you can tell from it's having a very nice shiny new mains plug on, this machine has actually recently been serviced. I got this overhauled by Mark at Retro Clinic and it works very well. It's an issue four machine and it's the one I normally keep over at uh, where I keep all my other stuff. So I have a BBC set up there. And I wanted to get the ROM board in because I'd like to have both my Beebs effectively running all the same software. So I'm gonna whip the top off this and then we'll have a look inside and see what needs to be done. Now in one of my earlier videos, you would have seen me wiring audio out of a BBC B to a jack socket. And that was actually on this machine and the jack socket was there. It has all been taken out because when Mark serviced this machine, he took everything back to stock. So that got taken out, but you know, it's not great shake, so I can always pop it back in if I want to. Now, it also has a non-standard keyboard connector because the original keyboard lead was a little bit worn out. And what's nice about these new ones that you get is that you can actually move the keyboard out of the out of position and it can still stay connected. So you can work on the computer and keep the keyboard plugged in. Now you will see a full set of ROMs already in here. I've got basic, I've got the computer's operating system, I've got the card reader um, ROM, which is the, the SD card that fits underneath. I've then got the ample ROM, which is the ROM that I use for the, um, the Music 5000 system. And I think that one there is the operating system. That's actually the disk filing system. That's the operating system. So I don't need all of these ROMs in here because I'm going to put some of them onto the new board. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take some, take some of the ROMs out and I'm then going to install the board. Now the board itself will be positioned about here. And so what I have to do is have to take out this ROM here and I have to take out the processor. 
and then I also have a wire that I've got to connect up but I'll show you all that in a minute so the first thing I'm going to do is get my chip pulling tool and take out the chips that I no longer need in the board has to be said I absolutely hate having to do this because you never know if you're going to mess it up or not but this tool which I bought from a, a gentleman in Cornwall with a load of other computer bits does actually work quite well so I was able to get the chip out and the this, the actual metal bits here lock into the chip as you pull it out so you pull it all out straight you do get some chip pulling tools that actually anchor the chip at each end and pull out but you can risk bending pins now the biggie I've got to take the processor out and this is going to be a little bit nerve-wracking so I'm going to gently pull it out from one end there we go then I'm going to do the same further back There we go, actually came out quite easy. I'm going to gently line up the pins going to the ROM, like so, and then the pins go into the processor, and I'm just going to pull them in very gently. There, and then push that in lightly. That's well, popped out. Okay, that board is now in place. The next thing I need to do is I need to replace the CPU. So I'm just going to check the CPU doesn't have any bent legs or anything. No, that all fits perfectly. Okay, let's just pop that in. And I've looked around and, yep, yeah, everything's in place there. So all that bit is, in, is all now wired in. Now, if we see here, we've got this little wire here. Now that has to be plugged in. And this is where we go to our instruction booklet. If we look at the diagram then, it's asking us to remove a link here that's on the board and for this wire that's on the board to be plugged in there. So let's go and look at this on the computer itself. So I've removed that link and I'm just going to stick the connector on the other side so we don't lose it. And then this wire here goes on there. And then that's it, that's everything installed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch it on, plug it in and see what happens. Okay, well the machine's now uh, plugged into the monitor, where I have my other one plugged into just now, switch them on. There we go, and it's all working. And let's have a look at what the screen says. Okay then, so if I type in star ROMs, we'll see what's actually in the machine at the moment. And it's got quite a lot of stuff here. It's got the, um, the software for writing to the ROM, it's got this thing called ADT, it's got BASIC, it's got Snapper, um, two versions of BASIC, it's got, it's even got some games on it. And if I type in, say, star S-N-A-P-P-E-R, then it will run Snapper from the ROM, which is done, instantly loads. Um, so ZX, a space of fire. I'm absolutely rubbish at Pac-Man. There you go. I'm dead already. Anyway, that just shows the system works. Now, if I go star help, actually if I type it incorrectly, then yeah, you can see all the other bits and bobs that are in it. Now, what we need to do is we need to create some form of uh, program to copy a ROM into the system. Now, there's various ways you can do this. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to create a disk image on the PC and I'm then going to put that disk image into the Beeb. Now, there's a very simple way of copying the software from the ROM onto a disk so you can write to it. I'm not going to go through that now, um, but it's very simple. But I'm just going to show you how I actually program the ROM onto it. And for doing that, I'm going to be using this, my uh, GoTech drive. So I've got to plug the GoTech drive in first. Now with this board first installed, all the ROMs are going to be on this board. However, if we move the camera across, you'll see these two ROMs here. We've got basic and we've got our filing system. Now we need to have these ROMs working, particularly the filing system, in order for the computer to see the disk drive that it was originally using because this board doesn't have that ROM in it. And to do this, all we have to do is remove this jumper here, which I've done. And with that jumper out, these two ROMs here then become active. 
and then we can then access our filing system, on this case, the GoTech drive, and we can then copy our files across. Right then, I have this piece of software called DFS Imager, and it's basically a piece of PC software that will write images of floppy drives that are then saved, and you can then stick it onto a USB stick, and the Beeb will read it as a floppy disk. You can also use this program to make floppy disk images, which you will then use on an SD card reader that you can also get for the Beeb, and you can do it in a very similar way. But I'm going to be using the GoTech drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up an image that I've already kind of half made. And this has got the software inside it that we can use for making the ROM. And it's this SST thing here. Um, it's all a load of gobbledygook on there. Um, the next thing you need to do is to copy across the ROM that I actually want to use. Now you would think this is a kind of a drag and drop way of copying stuff as most Windows programs do, and you'd be right, except on this piece of software, it needs an INF file to copy across your ROM image. And you can normally find them on other disks, and then you just literally, re if you rename it with the file that you want to put across, then it usually works. So I've got my ample ROM here, and then I've got this INF file, which if we look at it in a text editor, basically this, this bit of code here, I don't quite know why it does it. I'm sure there are experts out there. But anyway, if you have this piece of software and you can't copy files directly to it, it's because each file you need to copy across, it needs one of these INFs with it. So if I highlight them both, and I then drag them to the disk image, they're now there. So I'm now going to resave this, and I'll just go um, close image. Well, I've just renamed that disk image as Ample ROM, just so I know what it's called. And then I shall plug in my USB stick. Go and copy that. Okay, as I turn this, then you can see there's different file names. If I turn it right the way back to A, Ample ROM, I then press the button here. And that image is now loaded up, so that is what the Beeb will now see. Right, I've reset the machine, everything's working now. So if I go star dot, there's our ample ROM there. So type in star ROMs, and that's our list of ROMs. I'm going to overwrite ROM sticks. Okay, the first thing I need to do then is I need to erase what was on slot 6. And that's simply done by going star SST, you then use the hash and 6. And that's now erased it. And if I go star ROMs, um, we can see there is nothing in six. So we now want to just double check what's in our disk. And there's our ample and all the SST programs. We now go star SST ample six. Now if we go star ROMs, uh, we can see in it's not there. So we go control break and then we go star ROMs and it should have updated it, and there we are, Ample Nucleus version 1. And if I go start Ample, there it is. That's the actual ROM. So I've literally copied a ROM from my SSD drive onto the system, and then that will just stay there forever now, and or as long as the battery lasts. And it's a really, really great system because it means you don't need to be writing ROMs, ripping the computer apart, and plugging them in, you can simply copy them to the, the control board and it will all work. And if I go control break and I go star ROMs again, there is everything and I can still use star card and I've got my card running. If I go star disk, then the filing system's accessing the disk. So everything's there now. And there we go, my issue 4 Beeb now has its ROM board in, which means I don't need to program any more chips. I've got two leftover chips here that I can then erase, recycle and reuse for something else. Now, I haven't begun to touch a surface really on what you can do with this board. And the instructions that Steve Picton gives you with it are absolutely excellent. They tell you everything you need to know. 
Now, one of the things, of course, you can do is you can actually copy from one ROM socket to the board. So, for example, the filing system, you could then copy to the ROM board, and then you don't need to use the chip on the board by putting that link back. If you don't do that, then what you could do is take the chip out and stick a ZIF socket in the slot where that ROM was. And that means if you've ever got any other ROMs in the future and you just don't quite know what's on and you want to check them out, you could just maybe pop them in the ZIF socket and that's just an easy way of looking at the ROMs. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. There will be more coming soon. And uh, I'm going to go back for a bit of Chucky Egg.